Um, hi, uh, we're going to be looking at today a couple of projects which came out of the Lightning Hack Day event in New York. Um, uh, my name is Ben, and I'm also joined by by George. Hi. There we are. Um, and uh, we've got some very similar projects, and we, we, we met at the Hack Day, and we realized we had very similar ideas, um, uh, uh, and, and which we wanted to explore. Um, so just to give you some background on the on what the, the Lightning Hack Days are, if I do a quick screen share here, I'll show you the website. So FOMO, um, uh, a, 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 a developer who, who lives in Berlin, he set up these, these Lightning Hack Days in the beginning of the summer, I think, um, and they run three in Berlin, and it's really just a, a, a way for people to get together and to try and um, look at the, the Lightning Network technology and, and how it can be implemented in real-world scenarios. So the, the event, which uh, in New York, um, which was quite well attended, had some epic speakers as well. We had people like Christine Decker, Matt Crowell, and Pete Todd there, Alex Bosworth. And, um, and we were uh, really just doing that. We were just explore, exploring the technology and, and listening to interesting people talk and, um, and come up with different ideas. So I think the way it's going to run is, is I'm just going to maybe if I actually show you what I've made um, and then I'll talk about why I've made it and then I'll show you maybe some of the, the, the way in which I made it. That kind of probably makes sense. So if I could just do a quick demo here. All right, so what I've got here is yet another sweet machine. I'm sure people have seen plenty of uh, lightning sweet machines. Um, let's see if I get my camera not to fall over. Hold on. No. Maybe if I lift that up, it's like weighted. Oh, I'll do it. I just have to hold it. Right. So, what we've got is we've got um, uh, a little e paper module here. Um, and this is very low uh, energy, so it doesn't consume much power, which is which is good for you know devices where you're paying very small amounts. You don't want to be running like a, a tablet screen or something. We've got a really simple uh, microcontroller here called an ESP32, which is like a very uh, 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 simple device, much simpler than the cake, say, say a Raspberry Pi. It uses a lot less uh, energy. Um, so I'll show you a demo, uh, and ben, then I'll explain why. Sorry to interrupt, uh, but you want to maybe uh, turn the microcontroller a little so people can see it? Yeah, I'll, I'll show you that. In a, I'll show you, I don't, to be honest, because it might, all the wires might fall out. Oh, gotcha. But obviously, this is just like, a, you know, a, um, only recently been knocked together, so obviously it would look a bit slicker probably in real life. So I've got my Lightning wallet. I scan the QR code. You can see there's a, QR, uh, a, a, a payment there for Sweet Sun, if you can see. I hit pay. It's a payment sent. And then the Sweet Machine. <laughs> it's not a couple of sweets. I did only pay two cents, so that kind of makes sense. Um, uh, I'll pay again. I'll see. I think maybe the sweets may have been stuck in there. Let me let me let me let me pay again. Let me do another one. So the idea is that for a lot of applications for small payments, um, uh, you'd probably be paying the same amount uh, each time. Go on. There you go. Ah, brilliant. Gave me another sweet. Fantastic. Um, so the, let me put this camera back on here. There we are, cool. So the idea is that uh, for um, a lot of uh, uh, applications where you're only paying a, a small amount of money, real world applications such as sweet machines or um, uh, as George is going to be looking at an arcade machine, the payments would probably be the same most of the time. So, um, uh, it seems silly to have the ability to be able to kind of change the payments. You don't really need that. Uh, and also you want something which isn't going to consume a lot of power. Now, ideally, on a sweet machine, you would just have kind of a, a static QR code. This is what me and George were thinking about on the hack day. Um, and then you could just send small amounts of that static QR code and then have the sweet machine spell sweets. That's currently not possible. So we'd be trying to work, find workarounds for that. My workaround to have this is, is to have this tiny e-paper module, um, which doesn't consume much power, uh, and this small microcontroller. Um, uh, and then George's kind of got a different workaround for it. If I share my screen again, I'll show you the GitHub page for the project. Um, 
So if you go there, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so this is the GitHub page. Am I sharing my screen? Yep. I am, cool. So this is, I just, let me just knock this up today. This is the GitHub chat page for the, for the, for the, the, the Sweet Machine project, okay? Um, and there's a little demo in there. Uh, the, the hardware which is used, so the main piece of hardware is this ESP32. Um, uh, and originally these were made for, it's made by a Chinese company. Um, and it was the, they, they were, they made the chips for Arduinos um, and they made the, the Wi-Fi chip. But they did such a good job that like 90% of the processing power in the Arduino was actually in the, the Wi-Fi chip. So they just thought, well, we might as well just make the chips separately as they are. So they're, they're very popular, very, very cheap as well. You can get them for about $4. Um, uh, and uh, I was able to hook that, that up to the um, e-paper module. Um, and then, uh, so this is uh, a flow chart here. Here we go. So I was able to hook that up to the e-paper module, which is this thing here. Um, and then display a QR code. Once the QR code has been paid, turn something on for an amount of time. Once that thing's been turned on, request another QR code, uh, another invoice, and then display the QR code for that invoice. Um, I, uh, rather than have a, a node running, because I thought for this application in a stable environment, you probably, it's fine using a custodial service, but then you want the ability to be able to switch it to a node. So I used um, uh, something called Async Strike, uh, which is kind of a custodial service by the same people who do a Claire. So I'll show you the flow chart here. So we, we turn on the, the device. Um, it's very low power as well, which is an important point. So we get an invoice or a lightning invoice from Async Strike for however many cents. The, it's converted into a QR code within the, the ESP32. It displays it on the, the paper here. And then it's just asking uh, Async, has this invoice been paid? Has this invoice been paid? Has this invoice been paid? No. It just keeps looping around and displaying the QR code. As soon as it's being paid, it turns uh, one of the GPIOs on. Um, in this case, uh, in the case of the Sweet Machine, it turned on the motor on the Sweet Machine. And then it requests a new invoice from Async Stripe. So it just kind of keeps looping around, asking for the same amount, uh, because for that particular device, you're putting essentially the same amount of value in for the same amount of sweets. So. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's that, that, that's pretty much that. Um, on the actual GitHub, there is the uh, the code here for the um, for which for the Arduino um, for the ESP32. You would use the Arduino IDE to upload it, um, and in there you can like set the settings. So I put the settings at the top here, and you can kind of set the settings for um, how much you want to pay, uh, description. So I've said sweets. But this could be anything, I suppose. If you got um, one of the other things I, I made is a, a wine dispenser, so that could that could be wine, for example, and then uh, the API key uh, for async strike is async strike here. Um, it, great service, uh, good for like development stuff. If you you know it kind of takes the having to run your own node bit out of the equation, um, but then uh, it uses a very similar kind of API. Th to um, a lightning node, so it's not incredibly, it's not that hard to switch it across if you wanted to to a private node if you needed to. The way the system works is you you accept small lightning payments, and then once it builds up to a certain amount, you can then um, uh, withdraw as, as, a, as a Bitcoin mainnet. It's, it's pretty cool. You only need your email address, your pass, and a, a password to, to to join Strike, and then when you're on there, then you you know it has like pretty good documentation for the API. Um, and you can do like requests. Uh, so this is essentially similar to the sort of request I'm doing. Um, uh, and then it just spits back a, um, uh, a payment request um, with the details. And then you can you can use that information then to check to see if that payment's been made. Um, uh, so that's pretty much the guts of my project. So how do I flip and get back to the, oh, here we go. Right, okay. So maybe if I demo it one more time, get a little shake to get those sweets ready. Yeah. Um, it's cool as well because like I'm an imbecile. I, I can't, I'm not, I know I don't know how to develop stuff. I'm very new to all this development things. And uh, if it wasn't for all the help from the kind folks at the, the, the lightning hack days, then this probably, you know, this wouldn't have happened. Um, but 
this is pretty stable. Like, you know, I, I, I've left it running for a couple of days. Um, and uh, my ad as well, I left it running on, on one of these for a couple of days. And it's been absolutely fine because it's so low power. We click pay now. And it, it, it's stable. This just continues to work. Because I think it's, maybe it's so simple, you know. Yeah, it spits out the sweets. Hmm. There you go. It was better. Oh, but yeah, I, at some point, I, I want to like obviously make like a little box or something for it. Um, and as, as George said, I'll try and show you the SP32. So this is the SP32 here. You see that? Yep. Yep. And then uh, most of these wires here are the um, uh, SPI connection to the ePaper display. These displays are flipping awesome. So um, when the display, maybe if I do another payment now while it's kind of zoomed in. Um, Go on, focus. Not focusing, is it? Uh, let's have a look. When you um, uh, when the display refreshes, it uses electricity. But then once it's refreshed, no, my camera, no, my phone's not focusing. Some serious focusing issues here. There we go. Right. Okay. So if I pay that, if you can see if I'm trying to get that in there, I'll pay that, and then payment paid. Okay. So. It spits out the sweets. We've got loads of sweets that time. It's not very regular the amount of sweets it's spitting out. But this only uses power once it refreshes. Now it's refreshed. It's essentially turned off. So it's not using any power. So a lot of the other examples I've seen, uh, and considering these are like devices for quite small payments, a lot of the other examples I've seen, um, they've had a, like a tablet or something running, and that's going to be consuming a lot of power. So it really seems to make sense to me. It makes sense to have something which is low power, and then have uh, and also a very like dumb low power device just checking to see if an invoice is being paid. I suppose the difference here is uh, one one of the other major differences. Instead of having a full um, lightning node in every device, you have one lightning node or a custodial service, and then you have slave devices which then request invoices from that master node or from that custodial service. Which, to my mind, is more secure and probably more manageable because your your node, which you have in your secure back office, um, could be well balanced with channels, have really good network visibility, um, uh, and then all those slave devices then connect to it rather than trying to. I mean, like, can you imagine, like, you know, if you had a, a whole bunch of sweet machines and having to balance all those nodes and make sure they've got decent connection to the network? And all that's improving, but it's still it's still a bit faffy. So this kind of makes sense to me. Yep. And it has, you have got the ability, if you want, then to go off grid and get your own, have your own private node and switch it from a custodial service to the private node. Um, now, George's uh, approach to the problem of how to do repeat payments for a small amount, you kind of took a different approach. And I, 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 I don't know, I think both are kind of valid, but in different ways, aren't they? So, do you want to show us? I was going to say, and you actually touched on it, was I originally showed up at the Lightning Hack Day. Thinking I would make my note use the GPIO pins on my node trigger to trigger the arcade credit, but uh, thankfully I met Ben and he had a much wiser idea, which was to use the microcontroller to do that. Because my idea wouldn't have really scaled. It makes much more sense to just have a little cheap device in um, in uh, in each of the diff each of your different uh, arcade machines or vending machines, and then have one central node. So um, I, I actually totally didn't realize that that, that was. Uh... <laughs> that I actually had some like beneficial impact on someone yeah. else's. I didn't realize. I didn't realize that. So that's cool. That is. You're just gonna hook to the GPIO of the uh, of the node, which would have been an interesting experiment, but it wasn't really a scalable solution. Yeah, it'd be pain in the ass. If you had like a room full of arcade machines, you've then got to balance the channels on each one of these nodes. It it it'd take forever. It'd be annoying. That's what didn't occur to me, despite the fact that I had a handful of these ESPs and had programmed them before. Uh, I had a bunch of them at home, but it it didn't occur to me to use them. So you were you were the critical component in, in making that you know, ma making that idea flourish. Uh, so what I have here is similar setup. It's actually very similar. The only difference is, uh, so this is an ESP. Can you see this down here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. This is the ESP32, similar to the one Ben's using, only mine has a little display on it, though I'm not really using the display except for a little bit of feedback. It's like redundant feedback. Um, instead of a transistor, I'm using a relay module because the transistor kind of exceeded my current electrical knowledge. 
the relay module is a little bit more straightforward to me. And that uh, actually connects to um, essentially a joystick controller that's what that's also wired to the sw the credit switch of my Pac-Man machine here. Let me lower this a little bit so you can see. So in a typical arcade machine, there's just a switch that senses the quarter. I should probably put a quarter in this thing. Let me do that. They had a Darth Vader. No, no, I was going to say you got you got all the boy toys in there. <laughs> I'm in my my son's room. Um, so if I put a quarter in, you won't be able to see this probably on the video, but you'll be able to hear it. <coughs> so the switch the switch down here is triggered, and then uh, the Pac-Man credit. It made the Pac-Man credit noise. I remember that noise. Yeah, yeah. So um, so essentially, this little microcontroller is performing the same function. I just currently have it rather than wired to, to, to trigger the same input to the game, I just made it use a separate joystick input. It's like joystick button 10 versus joystick button 11. Um, let me turn this around so we can see the display. Then uh, what you'll also notice is different than Ben's is he has an e-paper display because currently lightning nodes, I mean lightning transactions require a specific invoice that can only be paid once. And uh, so in his solution, he generates a new invoice and then has the e-paper display uh, show the new uh, invoice QR code. You then scan that and pay it and you get it. And the next time you get issued a new invoice. Um, in this sort of retrofit application, I was thinking that would be more expensive, first of all. It also would be logistically complicated. Where do I mount the display? Ultimately, it would be great if it could show up on the arcade screen display, but it's certainly in the, if it's, we're talking actual retro arcade machine instead of this, which is an emulator machine, that would be harder to do, too. So um, th that was interesting. I think you told me, that uh, Ben, that you were asking, uh, you were interested in how you would do static QR code. That maybe that was how you first initially were going to approach the, the the sweet machine issue, and then we both, uh, when Christian was was speaking, you you uh, you actually raised the question. When Christian Decker was speaking, you raised the question: Is there a way to to have static QR codes? And that kind of got my wheels moving, um, thinking about. And you said it was the the most uh, requested feature, um, but I think actually because they they just had that meeting in Adelaide about um, Bolt one point one. Well, I think they've got so much to do. The, that's one of the things which, yeah, it's most requested feature, but it's something they you still yet haven't looked at, and it's kind of the bottom of a long list, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, it's a UX thing, it's a UX thing, that, so they're looking at the protocol stuff, and this is like a, it's a major UX improvement. We should really probably have high priority, but actually there are, there are other, like, protocol things which I suppose, yeah, they probably should have high priority. It must be incredibly hard balanced. Sure, sure, exactly. Um, so, what occurred to me is that rather than having uh, the QR code represent the lightning invoice, the QR code could um, simply be a pointer to a place to get a lightning invoice from. So what you can see over here, well, you probably can't read it, but I'll bring it close to the screen. This is a static QR code that currently resolves to a, a service that I built um, on my Raspberry Blitz node um, in Node.js in Node.js, and and if you were to hit this URL, and you probably could scan this QR code and hit this URL, what it would return you, um, well, I take that back. There's two different ways it could return to you. If you use a browser to hit it, it will return, um, and actually, let me do that. I can demonstrate this. Let's see. Yeah, this is cool. And I think I'm going to show this the second scenario I developed first, um, and then I'll show the, the tighter integration. So if I go to my um, oh, go to my QR scanning software, and I let's see, and I scan the QR code, it's it's simply a URL um, that, as I explained, is is the endpoint uh, an end, an endpoint on my Lightning node. If I follow this, it'll open a browser which presents an HTML page. Which says pay Lightning Network invoice for 250 satoshis. It shows put it put it closer to the put it right up to the camera because it's kind of sorry. Oh yeah, I see. Kill this light might be hurting it too. Hold on, is that coming through? Yeah, no, that's nice. Oh. And then it has the QR code if you wanted to scan it. Let's say you're on a desktop browser, um, and then it's got uh, the Lightning invoice data there. And the great good part is you could just click it. 
and it will launch my lightning wallet Whoa. and there there's uh the actual uh payment confirmation screen and if i click pay and listen i'm not sure we'll be able to see <coughs> i got a credit that might be so the other thing um so so i think that's that's a, that's a that's something that would actually work i mean it does work and it doesn't require any special modification but actually at the hack day i had a different idea which was to actually modify uh, uh, Eclair and insert some code in the QR scanning section. So basically, the way this yeah, normally that's the bit that's the bit I've seen before already. So yeah. So so basically, the way this normally works is you scan a Lightning QR code that represents the Lightning invoice, not some not some uh, web endpoint, and then you immediately pay it. So what I did is I just inserted some code that said if what's scanned resolves to a web address, make a get request to that web address and look and see if it's a, a lightning lightning data. Um, and in that case, I just sort of continue. So it's like a tiny, tiny little diff to the async wallet that I have now installed on my phone. And now what you'll notice is, let me just, let me just cancel that and start fresh. So if I do scan payment request, just like normal, I scan that same QR code it transparently uh, gets the new lightning um, invoice in the background and then uh, scans it. So kind of the user experience is the same whether, whether or not you're actually scanning a lightning invoice or a address that will return a lightning invoice. And again, if I say pay, <coughs> I get my credit. Nice. I remember that noise. It's good. Pretty much it. That's the demo. I like the way you've been, have you included the the little um, OLED on the actual ESP? Does it do something? Yeah, it shows. It says LN one up. Let me do it again. I don't know if you. Can, oh, here. Let me try to move this closer. Let's see. Can you see it better? Yeah. Okay. Let me pay it again. Oh, you know what? Let me do it. Let me do it the other way. Because this this sort of proves the point. I'm scanning the same static QR code and paying, and now it should say LN one up. That's flipping nice, and it's so fast as well. This is what I love about the Lightning stuff is it's, it's 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 it feels very stable. I know it's supposed to be all reckless and whatever, but it feels very stable. Like you, at the time in which as, as long as you have like decent connection in the network, the time in which you wait for um uh for 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 uh, uh for, uh, for it to feedback is being paid it's so it's so short isn't it it's just like it's just like compassion you know yeah it's really fast i cur i currently pull every two seconds but i if I, I think i could pull every half second and it would be that much faster in other words my side of the code is is what's slow it's not the lightning side yeah no i'm doing the exact same thing so i'm like so my my esp32 is checking um a six strike like every second or two seconds or something, mm -hmm. uh, but I could I could do that like a, a, a third of a second or half a second. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's, like you say, it would probably be faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the lightning's happening in you know well under a second. So if I tightened up my loop, it would it would be that much faster. So basically, I'm the I'm the the smaller part of the or I'm the the longer part of the time. The lightning stuff's happening super fast. Uh, I think that the cool thing is that, like, both of our projects, you know, which seemed like kind of a distant idea, that we've, we've both tackled the same topic, the same subject, and we've both come up with kind of different solutions for it, which are both kind of equally valid. Um, um, yeah. your, your solution, I kind of prefer your, I think it's probably because obviously the grass is greener, but I kind of prefer your solution because you could literally, so like, if I, if, if you, so... How can you change the actual QR? Do you have to do you have to go in and hard code to be able to print out a new QR code or um uh what you mean in terms of the microcontroller? Yeah, so if I had like a bunch of machines now, how would I get a different QR code for each one of those machines? So currently, and this is this since this is sort of proof of concept, I haven't gone through many iterations. I, I could see certain things changing, like right now. What this is scanning for is a unique code to the machine 
and also a price. And um, so what that means is that has to be programmed onto the microcontroller. But now that you say it, it probably makes more sense for this to simply know the unique code of the machine, and then I could change the price remotely. Um, so, so meaning maybe that should be state information that's stored on the server, and the only thing the machine knows to ask for is about itself. Is so, you know, are there? Do you, know could be quite, do you remember in the Lightning Hack? Did you remember Pierre Richard and he was talking about the um, uh, the the Excel plugin he was making for Lightning? Yes. Well, you know, I didn't see that talk. But I heard about it. I, heard about I wonder it. if you could like see. So, so you could probably. I mean, I can. Uh, this. You could probably have like an Excel spreadsheet in your back office with all your arcade machines on. Um, obviously, it's better to have kind of a bespoke piece of software, but I mean, Excel is the, the, the most used business software in the world. So you have your Excel in your back office with all your arcade machines on, and then you could have it then feeding data um, from, from the node, I guess, probably. Yeah, I was thinking I'd build an admin interface um, for 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 on top of the node stuff that I built, the uh, Node.js uh, endpoints that I built. Oh, that's nice. Administrate it, yeah. And and so that's essentially now I'm like boiling it down. This really should probably only be asking what payments uh, have been sent to, to me, essentially. And the price shouldn't be embedded in the microcontroller. Right now I have the unique identifier and the price embedded in the microcontroller. And then that also is embedded in the QR code and I haven't really thought much about that. The QR code essentially, uh, the same thing. The QR code wouldn't need the amount per se. It could just simply have the machine. Oh. It's, like the it's quite controversial, obviously, because we like Bitcoin and we're all about the Bitcoin, but that does mean that you could say 50 cents worth of Bitcoin on the machine or whatever, or 50 cents, and then you pay the equivalent and then your Node.js server could then calculate you know, using exchange rates or whatever, um, uh, the price in Bitcoin, couldn't it? Sure, if you wanted to price it in fiat versus in, in Bitcoin, yeah. But 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 also the key being that there's no reason, right now I currently have it set up, and you can see it right in the URL, uh, I currently have the price 250 Satoshis as that last little parameter on the URL. Um, that doesn't need to be there. Um, that could be configured as state information on the server, and when someone makes a request for a payment to this machine and a little table lookup is done to cross-reference the machine with its price, that generates the invoice with the right price. And then when someone pays it, basically, basically push, push the price to be state information on the server rather than as part of the communications between the, um, between the wallet and the, or, or browser and the server and the machine and the server. That could basically be left out. The simplest is just to have an identifier. I think it's like you said, because you did say before, I think it was probably off air, but you said before about the um, the idea that when you make a little project like this and when you come up with something, you, you're essentially making something unique, aren't you? Kind of like you're treading on new ground. And then once you've actually made the physical pro product or device or whatever and you can actually look at it working, you then you fire, your brain starts firing and you start thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that, blah, blah, blah. So like similarly on mine, um, I might get it on again because, you know, I like paying myself cents for sweets. Um, on mine, on the uh, the SP32, that can broadcast an access point uh, when you turn it on, so you can enter in like the Wi-Fi credentials and then a price and then a description, rather than having to like sort of like hard um, encode it in the actual in the actual code, because you, you know your, your shop owner or whatever, you might not. For him, like using the Arduino IDE might be a little bit too fiddly for him. So if I click on pay, Let's see if it works again. Is it working? Go on, you bastard. So it's better. Yeah, we go. And it spits out the sweets. I got a lot of sweets that time. Didn't I? Look at that. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, the, 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 the similarly, like it's, it's, you, you, you kind of come up with a whole bunch of, um, of, uh, of other ideas which you could kind of work into the system. So if a mind to have an access point, you, you would go into it and then you would, you would literally just on your phone or whatever on a browser and then you could put the details in for the Wi-Fi and then the description of the product and then the, the amount it costs as well. Um, uh, and then also you could take maybe that kind of e-paper module 
and you could tell it ASP32, and you could actually you could actually plug in a uh, a little keypad, um, and you could use it for a vending machine. So maybe instead of it doing this uh, being used just for repeat payments, the same amount, which is cool, you would have it for um, uh, you know when you're in your vending machine and you I don't know Mars bar costs a pound or whatever, and then you press D3, and then it you could you could generate the QR code on the fly um, with a new with a new price. Um, uh, so yeah, so no, so it's 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 making this stuff is good because it kind of like just gets kind of gets your, your brain fine. You find that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once once you once you get into the details, it makes you think about what else is possible. Yeah, nice. Well, okay. Well, should we should we? I think we we pretty much demoed our our, our things, haven't we? Yep. Cool. Um, uh, okay. Well, thank you for watching. If you're watching and. Um, uh, uh, this stuff, you know, I'm, I am an imbecile. Uh, George is not, by the way. He helped me a lot on my on my project. It's funny, but you, you you're doing a great job. <laughs> Pardon? Self-deprecation is funny, but you're 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 truly doing a great job. I don't know about that. Um, uh, you don't see how long this stuff takes me, to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, right. Anyway, so uh, thank you, thank you for thank you for thank you for for your help. Thank you for everything you've done. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you're, you're actually pitching that for the bit devs in New York, aren't you? Uh, in a couple of days, I think. On the, the 27th. That's cool. Um, so I suppose we probably shouldn't release this video until after, till after that. So I imagine you're watching this after the 27th. Uh, well, good luck with that. And um, uh, I look forward to seeing sort of which direction it goes in. Thanks, George. Okay. Thank you, Ben.